today we are tracking guitar for a song that I wrote almost 10 years ago, over 10 years ago. 10? It's like nine and some change. It's almost 10 years. It's called Last Train Home. And so I've tried to record it many times and I've been performing it for like a decade and it's finally gonna become a, a released record. It's the closest to finished out of all the records. We just have to track guitar on it. There's already drums, there's already like some vocals. I redid the vocals, so that's all good. So today we're gonna track guitar and then see if there's anything else we wanna add to it before we go into mixing it. Welcome to episode two of The Grounds. Last week on The Grounds, we got Organize. There's already 45 songs here that are going to be songs. They're all in my Asana board. This series is about creating 30 records in 2020, releasing them, making videos for them, and marketing them. But first we gotta create the records. We're about to enter into this intense period of creation. Last week, when I got organized, I made a few miscalculations. As you'll see today, tracking guitar for this song is, it's, it's an all day affair. It's, we have two microphones set up. One's a close mic dynamic, uh, right up on the grill, center on axis. And then we also have a fat ribbon mic here for the, it's kind of like a semi-room mic, but it's relatively close. It's like midfield. And uh, the reason I put these in this arrangement it's because I wanted to split them out left and right on the track to get a really wide guitar sound. Because they're different distances apart, I had to make sure that I either was able to delay compensate so that it would match up with the time that it takes for the sound to get from here to this mic. Sometimes that doesn't work very well if the waveforms that are coming out of the speaker are hitting the microphones out of phase. So you kind of have to push it in and out and just listen. Um, cool trick for doing that is you put them in mono and then you flip the polarity of one of them and as soon as you hear a nullification, like it gets quiet, then you know that you're gonna be in phase whenever you flip them back in. So then you can pan left and right, you get really wide, and then even if your song gets played in mono, you get a really nice, you know, full guitar sound. It's really cool is having Cup as a collaborator on this project because Cup is like, I've always thought he's a, like one of the best producers that I know, but he doesn't get a chance to like spread his wings really. I watched Cub zip back and forth between tracking room and master control room for like two days straight without sleeping to finish these records for a licensing gig. And those records are phenomenal. <laughs> I know that he can do that, but there's not a lot of opportunity for him to do that. And I think through this series, I can get him doing that stuff more. But putting all of his skills together, tracking engineer, musician himself, producer, electronic in the box producer, mix engineer, all those together means I can take a song that's mostly finished conceptually to him and he can make it cool in ways that I, I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. So yeah, for most of the guitar stuff that we did today, I wanted to keep it as like pure and just use the drive uh, from this amp uh, as I could. So we didn't use a pedal for a lot of it. We wanted to keep it just real warm, fat, chunky tones and kind of use some of the natural breakup. Since we can, this is a smaller, lower powered amp, so you can actually crank it and get some of the actual breakup that's in the amplifier circuit. And for the heavier, louder distortion parts, we wanted to do like a metal distortion sort of. Um, so we have this pedal here. I'm not really sure too much about it, but we tweaked with it until we got what we liked. It came out massive. Some kind of Russian pedal, right? 
Did yeah, that's what that? Kenny said. I don't know exactly what it is. It does have an overdrive and a distortion for this. We flipped it over to the distortion, cranked it up. We sent it into this. Uh, we have these two inputs right here. On the low input, it's cleaner. It takes pedals really well, and you can also still use the, the tone knobs. Get it more fat, crank it as loud as we want to. We want more fatitude, dude. It's got to be fat. All right, what are we doing next? Uh, next, we're going to just get a quick... Uh, acoustic guitar overdub and then okay. unless you got like a ripping solo in you somewhere <laughs> no no so my plan is coming together my plan was to start this show oh shit my plan was to start this show to get cup to just tell me what to do to make good music, and he would make good music, and then I could take credit for it on the back end. Why did you record it like this? Uh, mid-side? Yeah, we're just going on over there. So I recorded mid-side because, well, for one, it's a really cool technique. Like a lot of people who either haven't practiced a lot of microphone technique, either don't know about it or they just, they don't know how to do the encoding and decoding process in order to achieve the effect. So for one, it's just like a cool thing to do. It, it's a different sound than panning hard left and right or using like a widener or some sort of effect. So I have the RE320, the uh, dynamic mic, pointing directly at your guitar somewhere in between the sound hole and the 12th fret. Okay. Or at least just try to. I kind of like eared it up, you know? I like listened right. and stuck my head in there and I figured out where it sounded most full and still had the articulation that I wanted. And since the ribbon mic has full rejection on the sides, that means, and, and you had the sides pointed at me. Yeah. Which means it's just picking up what my sound is doing to the room. Right. It is picking up some of the neck, and it's picking up some of the lower part of the body. Uh, because right. Because the lobes of the figure eight mic are, are literally like spheres. Right, right, right. So when it's pointing directly at your pick, uh, at your um, where your pick is hitting, it is rejecting that, that almost of. almost entirely pretty cool and what the effect is is that say I have like your electric guitars pan hard left and hard right but I want your acoustic to have some some body and some presence you know so you have like the picking uh, action which is much more articulate than what's happening on the electric guitar right um, but you also have that low end of the body of the wood right to blow it blow it high. Never, I've never had as fun a tracking session as that. That was so much fun, like especially having Cup there to like tell me what to do, and then when I do it, I hear like an iconic sound or two where I'm just like, oh, that's on tons of records, and we just did it, I did it, because of his instruction. So that was fucking super cool. It gives me really high hopes for like, getting creative with the creation process of this project. I think like we can make a lot of really cool stuff from right in here, which is not a world-class recording studio by any means. <laughs> it took a long time to track these guitars, but it was worth it. And and I've spent a lot shorter time like moving the chains on songs and it's not as satisfying. So I have to sort of reconceptualize how this is gonna get done time-wise because that original plan from last week it doesn't seem right anymore. We're coming up against the end of January and we've tracked for like two songs. My production output is not up there. I'm not finishing records from a writing standpoint that I could be finishing. The next session will be the big test of if I can really just move the chains on a couple of records in one go. And if I can't, like, I don't know if this will all be possible. I might have bitten off more than I can chew with this 30 records thing. It's really going to take this next session to really see, am I capable of the kind of output that's going to make this possible? But this video is already too long, so I guess I, I'll just see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Peace out. And you'll have nobody.
give a fuck, dude. Who gives a 